Hello everyone, and welcome to this latest edition of our President's Video Report. I'm Richard Gary de Caillou, President of the Explorers Club, and I again welcome this opportunity to be with you face-to-face, -face, I'll be on video, with the latest exciting news about our club. First, as I kick off my second year as President, please allow me to share my thoughts with you on the state of the Explorers Club. As we're hopefully now emerging from the COVID pandemic, which over the past two years has significantly impacted our club economically, sidelined many scientific explorations, curtailed many special activities, and denied access to our club headquarters, we are finally back on our feet. Our exciting welcome home was this last April when we opened the doors to our club headquarters to hundreds of our members for ECAD weekend. Excitement filled the air as we were reunited with friends and fellow explorers, seeing and chatting with many of them for the first time in two years or more. And we are grateful to the wonderful support and loyalty of our members and our corporate partners who all stood by us as we endured the troubling and difficult times. Without that support and the PPP forgivable loans we received from the U.S. government, I cannot say with confidence that our club would have made it through financially. But here we are now, and as I go into my second year as your president, please allow me to reflect on one of the most significant goals I focused on, good governance. It's a key to the success of our club and a bedrock for corporate support. It's also the foundation that our individual donors focus on before they commit their dollars. In working diligently with our board, our vice presidents, and our committees during these months of isolation to ensure good governance, we have tightened our financial, legal, and corporate processes, including our bylaws to ensure consistency and the best good governance possible. We have reviewed all of our contracts for compliance and made sure that our trademarks are well protected as our name increases in value. We have designed and posted a new website that reflects the latest in technology, visual clarity and content, and has received wide praise. We are now receiving more significant contributions from individuals and corporate partners than ever in our history. We are getting long awaited and long needed repairs and upgrades to our club headquarters designed to serve and protect our members and our highly valuable archive. As a most active part of our diversity, equity and inclusion initiative, we continue to strengthen our EC50 program now entering its third year. As we've located and honored explorers from around the world who often are simply hidden in plain sight. We will soon have 150 explorers as part of this elite group. And good governance translates to keeping the wheels of the Explorers Club turning to make membership a valuable and meaningful experience for us all. To that end, the club wasted no time in reopening its doors at the headquarters on 70th Street in late April to welcome hundreds of its members from around the world for the first ECAD weekend in two years. The weekend included a series of presentations from our EC50, our next generation of explorers, and a full morning of presentations from our extraordinary award winners. And then of course, our glorious evening at Manhattan's Glass House for a highly successful ECAD. More than a thousand members and guests enjoyed an exceptional auction traditional exotics, and a chance to sit inside Blue Origin space capsule. William Shatner, who had just flown to space with Blue Origin, spoke at dinner, recalling his onboard experiences. And ECAD was followed in early June, when the Explorers Club again hosted the highly acclaimed World Oceans Week. Featuring oceanographers, scientists, explorers, and scores of guests, the week examined in depth the most important and critical issues facing the survival of ecosystems, our oceans, and our ocean populations, and the broader issues of climate change and its effect on preserving our planet. The club was transformed into the world of the oceans. Penguin, octopus, and mangrove rooms seen as never before. And as a special add-on this year, Oceans Week field trips in the New York area that brought explorers up close and personal with the important issues carefully examined all week. On a personal note, I was impressed by the data-driven movement, expanding environmental efforts from purely reduce, which has not proven much success over the last decades, to now include repair and restore. Our own great Sylvia Earle unveiled a new hope spot in nearby Shinnecock Bay, demonstrating that in just a decade, 
a major area which had been lost to pollution and other damage could be restored to bountiful diversity and productivity. Truly a model for hope for the future. And again this year, the Explorers Club joins the Portuguese government in hosting GLEX, the Global Exploration Summit in the Azores. It brings together world-famous explorers, scientists, and researchers examining in detail the most pressing issues facing our planet, and its oceans, mountains, plains, and caves, and what lies ahead for us in space. And changing gears, an exciting flag return to share with you. It's flag 1519, numbered for the year Magellan started his journey around the world, which flew proudly atop the mast of the Spanish naval training frigate the Elcano. The ship, complete with scientific platforms, traversed the Earth for over a two-year voyage, retracing much of Magellan's route. In an elaborate ceremony aboard the Elcano, when it was docked in Miami, Queen of Spain, Sofia, was joined by senior officials of the Spanish Navy and a delegation from the Explorers Club, headed by Executive Director Will Roseman and Club Vice President of Flags and Honors, Martin Nuia. They graciously accepted the return of flag 1519 as it was lowered from the mast. And a chance now to get an exciting glimpse of our members who form the club's next generation of explorers. This will convince you that our club is in very good hands going forward. Our communications chair, Bill Liss, who writes and produces our president's video report, reached out to board member Brianna Rowe and former board member and most active member Eric Zimber to get in touch with some of our next-gen explorers and let us know how they're doing. The response was overwhelming, and it will take two of our president's reports to share all of their experiences with you. First up is Joshua Powell. He's not only a next-gen explorer, but he's also a distinguished member of our EC50. He recently received the honor of speaking before the South Korean legislature about the potential for conservation of the Amur leopard. It is considered a critically endangered big cat on the Korean peninsula. Currently completing his PhD with the Zoological Society of London, Josh is also a visiting researcher at the Tiger and Leopard Conservation Fund in Korea, and he spends considerable time in the field in studying the big cats. Next-gen explorer Emily Paris is a PhD student at Stanford studying the limits of microbial life in super saline environments. This summer, she'll be in Australia in the acid brine lake region of Western Australia to help NASA decide how and where to look for life on other planets. And from Western Australia, we go to the South Pole. Sarah buck Ohms is a next-gen explorer from our Australia-New Zealand chapter and is now the 255th woman to winter at the Amundsen-Scott South Pole Station. Not to be outdone, she spent the summer in the McMurdo Station site, serving in both places as safety technician. She supports scientists and helps them in all of their experiments, field plans, assessing risk, and helping to provide necessary training. And from Belfast, Northern Ireland, comes next-gen explorer Richie Madden, also a member of our Australia-New Zealand chapter. He has a passion for scientific field research and exploration as a physician and is now focusing on major public health issues, specializing in the hepatitis E virus. He has co-founded a group that searches worldwide, and as Richie says, to find the hepatitis E virus wherever it may be hiding. And researching into the deepest caves in the world is next-gen explorer Sonia Meyer. She's participated in three Explorers Club flag expeditions and has explored the 10th deepest cave in the world. Her objective is to focus on the most remote areas on the planet and has recently gone underground to 400 meters. And next-gen explorer Penn Hollowell can be found in the Elkhorn Marine Conservancy in Antigua, where he has been building a coral nursery with some 1,600 corals. Or you can find him in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. In the mountains, he's helping to develop a high-tech trail map and apps that will use the highest levels of technology to access remote areas without having to secure high-priced accessories. As the founder of the nonprofit Marine Genome Project, next-gen explorer Daniel Ortega conducts scientific projects to increase the accessibility of genetic tools 
to protect marine environments. This summer, Ortega will be collecting and sequencing DNA samples from cave systems in Italy. And along the Swedish coastline, next-gen explorer Elizabeth Wiedner is studying ocean stratification using active acoustic systems to characterize different water masses moving through the area. She and her team have found a massive inflow of relatively fresh Baltic water moving northward along the Swedish coast. And the extraordinary discovery of gravitational waves in space. And an award-winning eight-part video series, as well as an award-winning feature documentary by club member Les Guthman that has gained worldwide recognition. Les wrote, directed, and edited both the eight-part series and the documentary detailing gravitational waves. The scientists who led the project were awarded the Nobel Prize for their discovery. It's not easy to explain gravitational waves and what it means, but we've asked Les to give it a go. Thanks so much, Richard. The discovery of gravitational waves launched a new era in our exploration of the universe. They're created by the collision of two black holes or two neutron stars. And for the first time, we're able to see the violent warped side of the universe. I partnered with Caltech, MIT, the LIGO Laboratory, and the National Science Foundation. And in great good fortune, I was at one of the LIGO observatories with my crew on the day the famous discovery came in, this after a 50-year search. This first animation is of the colliding neutron stars, LIGO's second major discovery, which launched a spectacular celestial light show that went on for two weeks. Take every star in the universe. That's Dave Wrightsey. All of its power. The director of LIGO, and those are the colliding black holes. The event that we saw on September 14th was 50 times, 50 times more powerful. Basically, the universe got 50 times brighter during that brief instant where, where it came together. The coming up scene is from MIT uh, about three weeks later. When everyone saw how, how strong the signal was compared with the noise. They, they were hundreds of kilometers apart, revolving around each other hundreds of times a second until a third of a second late, not, not even time to blink. They, they collided, they were brighter than the rest of the universe. It was the most cataclysmic event that I can think of. That's Ray Weiss. It's the vindication of everything. The Nobel Prize winning creator of LIGO. And this final note, an update on the latest rage in Bhutan, baseball. It comes from our chapter chair, Matt DeSantis, who brought the sport to the kingdom, along with our honorary director and head of the Bhutan Olympic Committee, His Royal Highness, Jingyel Ugyen Wangchuk. Thousands of young players have registered, along with coaches and umpires. The leagues are co-ed with nine boys and nine girls on each team, and the ages vary from six years old to their mid-thirties. We sure hope you've enjoyed this latest edition of our President's Video Report. And I am so proud of our club and its membership. As you have seen, we are truly in the golden age of exploration, equipped with the capabilities and technologies never before imagined. And with our superb grant support, we are now able to send so many more of our members of all generations into the field for meaningful and significant exploration and discovery. We are the worldwide center for exploration, and it is each of you that makes that possible. And I always welcome hearing from you, and you can get in touch by sending me an email at president at explorers.org. And be sure to reach out to our communications chair, Bill Liss, with any ideas you have for future President's Video Reports at wjliss at explorers.org. I'm Richard Gary de Caillou, and thank you so much for joining us.